reached their father Jacob in the land of Canaan, they told him all that had happened to them. The man who was the Lord of the country spoke harshly to us and accused us of spying on the country. But we told him, we are honest men and not spies. We were twelve brothers, sons of the same father, one who is no longer living, and the youngest is now with our father in the land of Canaan. The man who is the Lord of the country said to us, This is how I will know if you are honest men. Leave one brother with me, take food to relieve the hunger of your households, and go. Bring back your youngest brother to me, and I will know that you are not spies, but honest men. I will then give your brother back to you, and you can trade in the country. As they began emptying their sacks, there in each man's sack was his bag of money. When they and their father saw their bags of money, they were afraid. Their father Jacob said to them, You have to work, to work. Deprive me of my sons. Joseph is gone. Simeon is gone. Now you want to take Benjamin. Everything happens to me. Oh, well. <laughs> then Reuben said to his father, You can kill my two sons if I don't bring him back to you. Put him in my care and I will return him to you. But Jacob answered, My son will not go down with you, for his brother is dead and he alone is left. If anyone happens to him on your journey, you will bring my gray hairs down to Sheol in sorrow. All right. Now, Sheol means the grave. It's the place of the departed spirits. Hello. But um, uh, it, it, I, the w TBN movies that we watch, the um, uh, one of the movies had a very good way of putting verse 37 where Reuben said... Um, uh, kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Is the father Isaac said? So what am I going to do? Kill my whole family because <laughs> it was just well done. It was it was well thought out in that particular thing. But uh, uh, he, he's saying that Benjamin is the only one left. Obviously, there's eleven other sons, but he's saying that Benjamin is the only one left of Rachel. Okay, Joseph is gone, or he thinks he is. But you can see how his name. Isaac, I, I'm sorry, uh, Israel, which is Jacob, means deceiver. He had deceived in his youth, and he's being deceived in his older age. He's so, whining a little bit in this passage. It's, yeah. it's what? He's whining. He's whining a little bit in this passage. Too. Oh, yes, he is. And you, know, and you can see it all over there that he's just, you know, he's, he's distraught. All are it, it's all happening to me. It's all against me. And he just, well, you know, it, things never change, do they? Oh, no. And, you know, it, the, the whole thing is just, the, the whole account is just very sad. From the time that they return, they get the money in their sex, they get more afraid, because they said, now what? You know, I mean, here, we gave them the money, and now they're going to think if we go back, we're going to be accused of stealing or not paying, whatever. The, the whole thing is just a bad situation. So, oh, yeah, unbelievable. And then he says, no, he's not going to go. And he even already has claimed his second son is dead. Simeon is dead because he's planning on not going back to get that boy, you know. So you can see it's just very sad situation, the entire thing. How are you ladies doing today? Good, good, good. Okay, 43, one, please. Now the famine in the land was severe. When they had used up the grain they had brought back from Egypt, their father said to them, go back and buy us some food. Okay, so here we have... Uh, them not realizing this famine isn't going to just be a short time. They don't know that it's seven years. And so he's saying they're not going back. Things are going to get better. And all of a sudden, all their food is gone. And he's like, time for you to go back. Okay, go ahead. But Judah said to him, the man specifically warned us, you will not see me again unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy food for you. But if you will not send him, we will not go. For the man said to us, You will not see me again unless your brother is with you. Why did you cause me so much trouble? Israel asked. Why did you tell the man that you had another brother? Mm -hmm. They answered. The man kept asking about us and our family. Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? And we answered him, 
accordingly. How could we know that he would say, bring your brother here? Right, and you know what? It's just natural. You, the guy is asking questions, and they, they're not thinking anything bad. They're just thinking, well, you know, this is the situation, this is the situation, but Israel is not seeing it that way. It's like, everything is against me, and oh, you guys shouldn't have said a thing, and it's always that second guessing that you get with anybody when you have an argument or a, a, a disagreement with somebody. They're always, they know the end, but the people that were involved in it didn't know the end. And so this person can sit here and say all these things, but this is just the way life is. People ask you things and you say things, and then later you find out maybe you shouldn't have, but you don't know until you get to the end of it. So that's whatever. All right, go ahead. Back in 42, Jacob answered, and now it's Israel. Right. What? You know what? That's one of those things that you're going to see again and again. And it's not just in this account. You're going to see it in, like, the book of... Uh, the Psalms and Isaiah, they will be speaking in one paragraph and they will say, Jacob this, Israel that. And there is a reason, and I'm not always sure what the reason is, but there's no mistake when God does that. And it happens with other people as well. Like Daniel, his name was changed to, um, uh, what was it? Bel Belteshazzar, yes. I was thinking Belshazzar, but it's Belteshazzar. And you'll see... The king will be speaking to him in one verse, and you'll say, oh, Daniel, and the next verse you'll say, Belshazzar. And I'm not sure why this happens, other than, you know, it, it, I, I'm not one to hold to the Bible code, so don't get me wrong when I say this, but I'm not saying that the Bible codes aren't real. Okay? In other words, God uses the language to make his own structure and his own patterns. And suppose the Bible codes are real. Once again, I don't hold to them because there's something that we can't look at and say, oh, okay, this is going to happen, which is what people try to do with the Bible codes. They try to use it for telling the future or telling what's going to happen. And that's why I don't want anything to do with the Bible codes is because we can't do that. But that doesn't mean that the Bible codes aren't real. It's just that that would be God's prerogative. And someday maybe he'll reveal to us why these names are used in the way they are to show us a pattern. But I don't want to get involved in them now. You see what I'm saying? Just because something is real, like the constellations are really in the sky for a reason. They're mentioned in the Bible. God speaks of the constellations. But I personally don't want to get involved in knowing anything about the constellations because they can be misused for divination or for astrology. And so I don't want to get involved in the constellations, but that does not mean that there is not something written in the heavens from God from God putting in them there so that we can know things about him. And as I said, you read the book, The Witness of the Stars by E.W. Bollinger. He does a very good job of aligning the constellations with scripture. Okay? And so if you read that book, you can see all kinds of wonderful things about the redemption of mankind written in the stars. But I don't know enough about that to even want to get involved in it. Same thing with this. Maybe that's why God says Israel here. He says uh, Jacob there. And maybe there's other reasons that I just have never... You think it's a prescriptive, descriptive thing you're talking no, about? No, no. It's All this is doing here is describing something. So it's not going to prescribe anything. But there is a reason. There's certainly a reason. I'm glad you noticed that because that, that's one of the things that I've noticed in the past too. Is why does it say Jacob and then why does it say Israel? Why does it say Daniel and then Belteshazzar? And on and on. These different people's names. And he uses them back and forth. I don't know. But good... Good thing to think about anyway. Okay, please, go ahead. Then Judah said to his rough father, Israel, send the boy with me. We will be on our way so that we may live and not die. Neither we, nor you, nor our children. I will be responsible for him. You can hold me personally accountable. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, I will be guilty before you forever. Okay, it still doesn't lessen, it, it, suppose Benjamin doesn't come back, it doesn't lessen his grieving, but he's saying, you know, I'll be guilty before you. It's kind of a so what, but at the same time he's saying, I am going to be surety for you. So in one way it's saying that he is going to do the utmost to take care of the situation, and in another it really doesn't change anything. If he doesn't come back, he doesn't come back. But he is saying this now instead of saying you can kill my two sons, which is what Reuben said. So they're trying every way possible to get the father to see reason. Okay. If we had not wasted time, we could have come back twice by now. Right. <laughs> you know what? And that's one of those things that he was stubborn, he was obstinate, and now they've got themselves in a real pickle. 
because the father was like, no, we're not going to allow this. So it, it, two journeys, however long it was, uh, we, I think we said a journey would be about 21 days, something like that. And so that would be uh, a, a journey each way, we'll say a month going. So it's probably been three months since they got back, somewhere around there, because they had to eat all the supplies. They could have gone down, come back, gone down and come back. So it's probably been three to four months. Man, they got years ahead of them, years of famine ahead of them. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Put some of the best products of the land in your packs and take them down to the man as a gift. Some balsam and some honey, aromatic gum and resin. Pistachio? Pistachios, yes. Yeah. And almonds. Take twice as much money with you. Return the money that was returned to you in the top of your bags. Perhaps it was a mistake. Okay, now you can see they have been storing up a little bit of stuff. They have pistachios, they have almonds, but these aren't things that are going to sustain a family and they're not going to sustain their livestock either. So, I mean, they do have some things. Honey is going to continue to be produced even if there's less of it in a thing. So they do have some things, but it's subsistence only. And it's, you know, we, we think of pistachio nuts as something we enjoy. They're not something we subsist on. So there's no contradiction there. It's just saying that they, they, they do have some things. And plus trees generally have fruit when the, the grain crops don't harvest. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a tree has got deeper roots, so they may have a little bit of a harvest. So there's no contradiction there. So don't think that he's saying there's no food at all. And then he says, well, here we have this food. No problem at all with that. Okay. Take your brother also and go back at once to the man. May God Almighty cause a man to be merciful to you so that he will release your other brother and Benjamin to you. As for me, if I am deprived of my son, then I am deprived. Mm. Mm. Return to Egypt. The men took this gift, double the amount of money in Benjamin, and made their way down to Egypt and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to his steward, Take the men to my house, slaughter an animal, and prepare it, for they will eat with me at noon. Mm. The man did as Joseph had said, and brought them to Joseph's house. But the men were afraid, because they were taken to Joseph's house. Mm. They said, We have been brought here because of the money that was returned in our bags the first time. They intend to overpower us, seize us, make us slaves, and take our donkeys. Just imagine what's going on in their minds. I mean, the whole thing, they have no idea that they're going to be given a banquet. They have no idea about any of this, and they just think we're in, in a heap of trouble now. Oh, yes. <laughs> so they approached Joseph Stewart and spoke to him at the doorway of the house. They said, Sir, we really did come down here the first time only to buy fruit. When we came to the place where we lodged for the night and opened our bags of grain, each one's money was at the top of his bag. It was a full amount of our money, and we have brought it back with us. We have brought additional money with us to buy fruit. We don't know who put our money in the bags. Then the steward said, May you be well. Don't be afraid. Your God and the God of your father must have put treasure in your bags. Mm. I received your money. Then he brought Simeon out to them. The man brought the men into Joseph's house, gave them water to wash their feet, and got feed for their donkeys. Since the men had heard that they were going to eat a meal there, they prepared their gift for Joseph's arrival at noon. When Joseph came home, they brought him the gift that they had carried into the house bowed to the ground before him. There's a second fulfillment of the dream that he had, the first dream he had, where the brothers would bow to him. And this time, all of them are there. Wow. Last time, who was it? Um, Benjamin was still back up there. This time, all of them. So all 11 of them are there bowing down to their brother. So that's the fulfillment of the first dream. As I said, the second dream, the sun and the moon and the stars and all that bowing, or the uh, that one is fulfilled in Jesus, not in Joseph, because Israel did not bow to his son. I mean, I'm sure he just ran up to him, gave him a big hug, the mother was already dead, right? Rachel, the mother of Joseph. So that was literally fulfilled in Jesus 